Hello, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Hussein Cardo. Uh, today, uh, I will talk with you about how to prepare better lecture notes, and I will give two cases, two examples from my lecture notes. Well, I, what I, what I'm going, I'm gonna apply what we are going to give here in brief on our on my lecture notes. Uh, before I start, I would like to mention something that there are many. Let me say. Um, styles for putting your lecture, I mean, as a lecturer or uh, as a trainer to, 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 to train or let me say uh, your group or uh, as a supervisor putting lectures, you, there are many, uh, let me say, um, uh, styles. Uh, all these styles actually, they are common in the basis and the basics and the basics for putting lecture is the same. I was mentioning for them here, but uh, the personality, the knowledge, the experience, the mentality, the background of the lecturer will be added there. He will artist the, let me say, his lecture notes or uh, the way he give his lectures. Definitely different from person to person. There are no identical person there to give the same lecture. Now, uh, contents, uh, by the way, I gave the title of the, of the uh, presentation, which is how to be prepare a better lecture notes. And then I go for contents. Usually when people give a presentation in a seminar, in a conference, uh, or in front of groups, they, they put a contents to, to show the audience uh, what they are going to discuss with them. This is the normal situation. But unfortunately, many lecturers, what they do, they skip this slide, which is the content. They go directly to the uh, information, to the details, to science and something. Uh, I mean, in, in more details. And the, the, the audience, they don't know where are they are going to stop. Uh, which is not advisable. And my advice is always put a content and let the audience, even if they are students in level one or two, whatever the level, whatever the background, whatever the specialty, whatever the course they are taking, let them know what you are going to discuss with them in the time frame uh, located for the lecture. Now, here in this presentation, which is a brief, yeah, there are many points, but I will go through them very fast and try to give a brief on each one of them, and then I apply them in, in my lecture notes. I give I will give two examples. I will talk about lecture notes, aims, choice and directions, critical analysis of what to include. I'm reading from the slide, when to cite, how to cite, reference your research finding, use and uh, urge students to learn from your research, use of visual aids, be creative, be professional, observe and adapt, proofreading tips, uh, overview, update the lecture notes, references, and citation, and at the end, references. Okay. Now, first of all, for, for regarding the aims, lecture notes are used to present an assisting document for the student to study the course effectively. Now, you have course, you have objectives, you have aims for the course, and you know what you want to give in this course in terms of the topics, the syllabus. And uh, definitely, what you are going to give is available on internet, either in websites, in, in, in papers, in books. But you know, students cannot read the, all these details. You need to summarize what is there in these books and these websites, and then make them effective. It means when the student attend the lecture, he feel he got the, the right information, the summarized information, the focus information, which make it make them effective. Effective, let me say, receiving of the information regarding for the course. Lecture, lecture notes reflect the lecture perspective on the topic and uh, knowledge he, she acquired. You know, you know that uh, any topic you are going to cover, you have tips or let me say points you need to cover in this uh, field on this topic. Each uh, person give the lecture, his lecturer, have his, his, his experience, his side view, uh, uh, his, let me say, vision, especially they, they, they deliver uh, courses, they are expert in, in these courses. It's related to their speciality, to their uh, study, to their, let me say, PhD as example. Okay, so what they do, they try to uh, go inside for some point because they feel these are uh, the, the important points. Uh, definitely, they give the basis. Basics to be given to the student. As example, if I'm um, electrical background, if they want to give electrical circuits, they give the basics. But they try to focus on some points because they feel that the, these points are the important points, and these points could be related to the future or to the present and the future uh, work in the field. 
highlight essential sections of lectures and simple description of various topics. You don't, I don't advise to go to details. Try to focus things for the students. Students want to know what is the important, what is the highlighted points you need to, to consider, okay? So you need to, to highlight this. I will show in, in some examples in the case studies, uh, as I mentioned. The main aim of the lecture note is assess students to achieve the um, intended course goals. Uh, also keep them focused to avoid disturb distractions and expansions away from the topic. Now, you know, any course is part of the curriculum, the plan, the, the, the plan for the, um, uh, for the study of the, for the students to be a special specialist in, as example, in electrical engineering, in mechanical engineering. I'm, I'm talking about engineering because my background is engineering. So, as example, to graduate with electrical engineering, electrical and computer, you need to, to study in level one these courses, in level two these courses, in four and five, and so on. And they are linked, semester one, semester two, they are linked with each other. So here, the, the, each course, each course you are going to prepare its lecture notes, supposed to have aim and goals. And these aim and goals, you going to drive from then, okay, the course learning outcomes. You mean what the student need to learn from this course. And these learning outcomes, course learning outcomes, supposed to be linked to the uh, program learning outcome. Because at the end, he will graduate with from program, okay? So you need to make sure that the topics you are going to cover in these lectures feed the course learning outcomes, which is already feed the uh, program learning outcome. Now, choice and directions. Figure or text dominates. I mean, uh, variety is important in your lecture notes. Don't focus only on figures. Some, some lecturers, they give a, only figures, no text, or some of them, they give texts. Uh, try to mix these, uh, these, let me say, tools. You need to put in your lecture, definitely, figures, tables, text, equations, some video, show them some video, let, track them, track the student, let them learn from the uh, cases. The, uh, sometimes we show them cases that happened in the lab, okay? So he, he, he understand what's going on, the theoretical part given to him, he understand it, how it happened in the lab. Some lecturer give long, which filled with details or short, mainly highlights. I don't advise both of them. I don't advise to give long or filled uh, uh, details for the students because he will lose, definitely. It will be boring and he will lose his way. And definitely, I don't advise to be only highlight. Try to mix between them. Some points, it be, Try to highlight these points, and some point you need to go deeply. Even you need to give examples in this uh, in this point, which is the long point. But giving either long lecture notes with full details or short, if it is long, okay, you didn't left anything for the study the student to go for the internet to Google something or find extra information because you gave everything. Besides, it will be boring. Don't expect the student sit for two hours totally and he will be focused the two, two hours, the whole two hours. From experience, no, the, 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 the focus will reduce with time and with much information you give them. You need to take a break between, uh, between I mean, in times between um, topics covered in one lecture and so on. Complementary to lecture or lecture the whole, the whole year. Let me say, sometime if you have topic, you may cover it in one lecture. The full story you will give in one lecture. Let me say it's two hour lecture. You give the full story from A to Z, which cover this topic. But sometimes you need to cover the topic in two, three lectures, four lectures sometimes. So uh, if it is uh, more than one lecture, then this means that the complementary, then they, they are going to, to, you are going to build. You need to consider this. In the second lecture, you need to brief what happened in the first lecture to connect. Don't expect the students will come and he fully remember what he took already two, three days back. No, you, three, you need to, to, to um, introduce uh, or let me say brief the, or review what already been given in first lecture and try to connect. If it is third lecture, give brief about first and second lecture because you are connecting the same topic. Critical analysis of what to include. By the way, I'm trying to give here tips. Otherwise, there are many points could be covered in each one of these titles uh, sections. A critical analysis of what to include. Any, let me say, slide, you put information in this slide, you need to think how this will help the students. Is it helpful? 
is is the information given here will help the students to reach the required let me say career training outcome or not so does it help the student to understand or not the topic think about anything you put in the same slide as example okay you say this is useful is this figure enough or you need to put some equations is there any figure better than this figure Th try to discuss this with yourself as a lecturer to make sure that um, uh, your selection or your uh, judgment about this slide or that slide is uh, is helpful citation is important it's a credit for you it's something ethical it's something professional uh, uh, so you i mean to make your work in with integrity you need to to cite whatever you you quote or what take her examples and i mean i will read some of them here when you quote two or more words verbate verbatim um, uh, verbatim or even one word if it is used in a way that is unique to the source you take it from source and you think this is unique from this source you try to quote it sometime you quote says or let me say um, uh, why is let me say scientists they they make a sometime you make make say sometime you you quote a theorem you want to make sure that you quote the right theorem sometime you quote from a paper uh, from a book uh, from um, uh, famous, let me say, scientists or persons, sometime um, uh, a new information just recently published and the student, they never hear about it you, and you quote because it's something new. The student need to know from where these came. Numbers, sometimes you, you give numbers or percentage for something you are discussing. It's good to cite it. This is not only to, uh, to show the credit for the references you already cited, but also to, uh, to, to teach the students how to they cite, plus uh, to uh, direct the students where to go to find more information about what you are do, talking about, okay? So it's advisable always to cite. There are many ways to cite uh, information you are taking from sources. Uh, as example here, you, you can see this slide, even if it's a simple slide, but see here in this in red, okay? Uh, we cite here the references, references and here or sometime uh, number you give number and the end of the uh, lecture note you give the uh, 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 let me say the references by numbers but there are many ways to to cite uh, references there is chicago harvard uh, apm the pa um, i and and even journals journals today there are uh, thousands of journals um, publishing information, important information. Some of these important journals, they put their own uh, citation way or method. Uh, reference your research finding. From experience, I found that it is really interesting and a good experience to include my research experience, my research going on either by uh, grants I got and I'm executing or uh, supervising PhD students, MSc students or working for industry, any uh, extra information related to research, really it's so useful and valuable for the students when I include them in my course. As example here, in one of my papers, I mentioned for this information, definitely you see in blue, I highlighted important parts and I gave here, uh, uh, let me say reference 11. Reference 11 is my paper as example, and I show it to the students. I share it with the students. If they want more information, they can't go there. So it's really useful for them to, to, to expand their information. Sometimes what I do, I take copy of the first uh, page, front page of paper already published. As example, this is one of my paper published. Okay, and I show to the students and then I direct them. By the way, some of them are open access journals and some of them are subscribed. So um, I show them uh, the, uh, to the open access. Definitely it would be useful for them. So they access and got more information use a visual aid visual aid here actually what i mean by visual aid i i not only here included the schematic of the system i'm discussing but i show them some photos as you can see here and sometimes videos even and by the way i i try to take i mean from experience it's really useful to take photos for the system you are discussing or for the topics you are discussing with your students by yourself as example, I'm, I'm working on solar cell, solar photovoltaic, which convert solar radiation into electricity. Wherever I go, I see solar cells. I take photos, okay? 
and try to link them. As example, here I'm talking about using solar panel to get to, to, to supply power to the pump and the pump get water from the well. So I show here photo for system as example in Oman because I'm living in Oman. OK, it's useful if you take photos for system in the same country or in the same city in Sahara's example. OK, this is uh, tell the students that the, what we are discussing is a reality is available in our uh, city or our country. Okay. Be creative, but professional. OK, now uh, lecturing is an art form. I mean, yes, there is science, science, scientific part or science which to be covered, but at the same time arts to uh, are testing the, the information to give it in better way, in effective way, attract the students, OK? Let them engage. It's not only, uh, let me say, the idea is not only collecting information and give them to the students, but let the students participate. Let them interact with you. Let them uh, enjoy what they are learning. Let they, they uh, encourage them to give their opinion. Uh, give them piece of information and let them complete the information. Give them questions and ask them, OK, uh, I have a question. OK, I will give this a question and I hope that we are going to discuss the answer. Next lecture, go please and Google it and find the information and they have a sort of discussion, brainstorming. This will make creativity for the students. Try to think what are the, the, the new way of gi giving lecture or delivering lecture, effective lecture. You know, as example, today uh, students are, are taking their lecture online. It's different to from face to face chat. OK, uh, so think about how can I make this attractive? Because face to face chat attracting the students. You you see them, you, you feel them, they feel you uh, much discussion, interaction, but in, in, in on on online. You don't know the students maybe is in his bed and listening just or uh, it's not that much attractive. Think about the new ways done by others. Other, let me say, lecturer, professor, professors in different countries, in different university and try to learn from them to add. Be creative, OK? As I mentioned, uh, uh, professionality in terms of citing sources, quotes, proofreading, text and so on. These are important and necessary. Observe and adopt. It's not only giving. You are taking from the students also. You observe with the students. You observe the students. You observe what you are discussing and let them observe with you and adopt. Sometimes you don't need them to tell them the whole story. Part of the story, let them think and then adopt the final, uh, let me say, uh, tooth or final answer. So like Alan Musk and uh, Steve Jobs, make it easy. Give discussion and open um the discussion to, to, li to listen to your students by the way encourage your students let them be um let me say have the confidence to give their opinion okay just sitting and listening to you is not not enough to give effective lecture proofreading is important <clears throat> mistaking in sometime in, in 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 word or let me say in 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 letter will change the meaning i here i give examples two examples i could careless i couldn't careless it's totally different you see, so you need to check the, the spelling, the proofreading, make a, but it's not only spelling actually, uh, contextual spelling error, sometimes grammatical error, and you need to check them. You see here, you, you need to check them. I advise, I usually, I, I try to use Grammarly, uh, okay, I subscribe in Grammarly, I have subscription in Grammarly, and I use it to, to check the um, text in my lecture. This is important and useful. And by the way, it's not to be done once. Uh, I mean, as example, I give sem semester in this course in this semester, and then another year I will give the same course. I need to revise it, not only to check the errors and uh, mistakes and make a proofreading, but also to update to see if I can change and make it better. And don't stick with the same slide for long time. Here are some tips. I will go through them if if it, is, it need uh, clarification. I will do. Consistent format, I advise to have consistent format for the slides. For what is in the slide in terms of, uh, uh, let me say, title of the section, subsections, and the text. I mean, some, some people, would, in each slide, the size, the font size, type, color, is different from the previous slide. This is not good makeup, I mean, it's not consistent. Make it consistent format. And sometimes the slide itself, some slides are uh, clearly, uh, as example here, the slide is a blue, okay? 
and another slide it will be red another slide the green this is not good this is not consistent and this is uh, not advisable to go in this direction uh, goals and uh, prospective use your material words sentences figure don't only copy paste this is not good style to copy paste from books and website try to use all your own material your your words your um, yeah, let me say thoughts consider the audience and their background i mean it's different if you give topic to level one they gave came to the university and they don't have the basis for the as example i'm talking about electrical engineering and they don't have the background it's different from giving uh, information in course in level two or three or four you need to know the audience uh, do they need to revise some information taken with previously and uh, to as a basis and then you go through the the course or uh, you start from zero this is important sometime in a topic within the course, you are delivering something, but it need to briefly review, uh, let me say, um, previous, let me say, techniques or methods, which is because you need them. OK, so this is need to be considered. Avoid many wordly slides, text and words, much words. There is, um, uh, let me say, um, a, a rule, say seven times seven. It means avoid to having more than seven lines in one slide, each slide, each line having more than seven words. I mean, this is just a guide, but it's at the end what they want to say, please avoid to have more text in your slide. A heading, I mean, as example here, I make heads in bold here as example, more, even if it's word, okay? To say that now I'm gonna go discuss the temperature. And even you can see here, I highlighted, you see in blue, I highlighted important things or ideas and in red, I highlighted the calculation. OK, um, this is the highlight uh, and this is citation. You see proper citation so the student can go for update the lecture notes, especially if you give it another year and another year, another year. Try to update it from time to time because knowledge will change. You may add more example. You get experience. You get some experiment in your lab. You want to add something about them related to the topic you are covering. So this is advisable and references. You can see here I'm putting from one, my, my, one of my lecture notes references, it's good to engage your research with your course you are giving. As example, if you see here, uh, Hossein Kadam, Hossein Kadam, Hossein Kadam, these are my references. I'm talking here, I'm giving the student information for the topic taken from my references. This is um, give me as a lecturer credit and confident, plus I'm talking with them with something I did by myself, with my students. So, so this is a credit, I'm know, I know what I do, plus, the students will see you in the lecture. I mean, student attending with me, as example, I'm giving a course in Reno Renewable Energy for level two, uh, level four students in engineering. And uh, when students attend with me in my lectures, they see me in the lectures. I mean, not, I mean, my, but they see Hussein everywhere because they see his experience. I'm giving them my experience. I'm giving them photos I use, I'm taking them by myself. Figures I show, I plot them by myself. Table I construct, it's by myself. Even the words I use is, is my, from myself. So references at the end. Now, after I, I completed this brief, let me back and share with you um, two examples. Two examples, just one second, let me share. Where is it? Okay, material, okay, this is material. Now have a look. Now I'm sharing with you. This is lecture from um, my course in level four. This is like just title on formation. This is 2018 for 19. It's renewable and sustainable energy course for level so two for level four. This is as example lecture number eight photovoltaic application. This is the course learning outcome to remind the students what I'm giving related to the course learning outcome. And then I start my lecture. Have a look at the first slide. Let me try to, one second, try to reduce the size. So you can see the whole slide. Okay, have a look at the whole slide here. Yeah, there is text here, but not that much. I make a point here. I will talk about them and see here, reference number one, course coordinator book. It's taken from my book. I published book in Springer Nature, taken from it. This is reference number two, taken from one of my papers, okay? These are here applications for solar cell photovoltaic. All these photos taken by my by myself in my camera. 
Okay, this is example, Suhar city center from the park. I went there. I saw photovoltaic the specific type by official. Then I took a photo. I will talk about it. Uh, here, uh, this is a building, Majan Electric Company. There is here a uh, project I've been uh, supervising, uh, 50 kilowatt. And I, I took photo. I, I showed to my students. This is systems I uh, executed and implemented in my lab on the building, on our building. Okay, and so on. I even you see it, wherever you go, you see citation for the references. This is as example, another schematic taken from my book. Uh, um, um, here, photos, you see uh, this is standalone system in Suhari. This is in our building, OK? A schematic from my, uh, I don't need to go with the information, but I just show you tips how I make my, uh, let me say, lecture more attractive for my students, OK? By the way, I try here to integrate research, my research with the uh, topic I'm covering. These are system. This is a grant uh, I received from Research Council of Oman. This is photo for some application for lighting in Sohar University. This is in Masdar in Abu Dhabi. I took it there. This is in Istanbul. I took it there. And you can see this is in Safa and Ibri near the border with the United Arab Emirates. OK, I went there and I, I take photo. This is applications, by the way. You can see the sections. I'm talking about communications here. Uh, remote site uh, electrification, remote monitoring, you see. I took photo to, to, to show the students what are the applications there. But all these photos taken by me, you see? This is a credit, and I know what I'm talking about here with my students. So this is the front page for two papers I publish in, in, um, in one in Hindawa, one in Springer Nature, and uh, I, I show them related to the topic I'm, I'm covering here. These are results from these two papers. I try to show them and try to discuss with them the schematic, the, the results, how it work. This is an example, a project granted, funded by Research Council of Oman with my students. This is after and before it means before how it looked like the place or location given to us and how we start preparing things and change it. OK, how we build our system here, connections, valves, we make a concrete inside uh, pumps, control panel with a camera and how it looked like at the end. And this is the final shape of the uh, system after we put it there. So this is a story. This is a, a case study I did with my students. It's very useful for my students to learn from. OK, some photos for using so solar, uh, uh, solar photovoltaic uh, for uh, these spots or uh, let me say ships inside the town in, in London. I took them there. Um, you see here some of our system either designed by our students. You see here students project. My students, they designed this refrigerator and these are air conditioning system. <clears throat> some of them designed by our students, some of them uh, uh, already there in the market. And we took photo to show the students how it look like. It's not enough to to talk with them about information, you need to show them because uh, figure say a lot. And these are example from my book. This is one of them, my two systems designed with my students. OK, some of our uh, student systems in, in, in Malaysia here, one of my PhD students. This is in Abu Dhabi Mazdar. You see all these photos, I, I took them by myself. OK, and I talk with them about the about these photos. I don't need to give them let me say much information written in text, but just uh, put the photo and then talk about it. Talk about what are these these point, these things, these devices, what they do, and then you give them more information. These are some equipment I, I took their photos in, in UK. OK. You see, and uh, by the way, should you see this figure? This is from my, my research, from my, one of my paper, and I discuss it with them, you see. I'm using my information. These are some photos front page for some of my publication related to the point. They I direct them to go and expand your information. This is system I designed with my students in, in my lab. And then uh, I, I, I talk with them about this system to cover this topic. These are my results. I'm not taking it from references it's from my uh, papers, published papers. All these are from my published papers. These are my systems, OK? These are my figures. So this is what, uh, when you integrate, it's really interesting to integrate your research with your the topic or the course you are uh, delivering. These tables are from my publications, as you can see here. 
sometime this is in in Asharqiya in Oman here solar for rural electrification to when I discuss rural electrification I need to show them some examples this is example okay but at the end these are the references this is um, let me say the first example now you may say okay now you your research in solar photovoltaic for that you have much information you put it here okay it's okay but what if the the let me say um, the course is um, it's not uh, let me say uh, re, re, you do, you are not doing research in this field. What you should do, okay? As example, I will give example here. Um, I will go to material number two. No, this is number one. Sorry, let me back. Mm. I will go to material number two. One second. I think this is. Yeah, this is. Um, course calls calculus and the statistics i'm giving this course for level uh, two in engineering okay forget about the first two three slides now here you you can see some of the brief i gave before is here you see i highlighted i give sections and titles uh, and then i highlight in, in 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 some points because i want to discuss with my students about them think show tell these pictures what they did and here i give flowchart as example I give tips here and talk about them. And sometimes I, 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 I credited the, 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 let me say, scientists behind these topics and even put a link for them to go for more information. Then here as example, I'm talking about line graph, how we use a line graph to represent our data. Why I take it from books, other books? Why I don't take it from my research? This figure I brought it, it's line graph. And I link here with photo, to tell them that this figure is the measurement of this system. Just to give them uh, extra information that what is solar system, we have the Sohar University and link to this, uh, let me say, land graph. Here, polygraph. Polygraph, you can see here, this graph, course coordinator research. Why I take from another reference? I talk from my research. Okay? Does it mean that we don't take from others? No, no, it's okay. As example, this example for Tita Titanic. And I, I took this information from website. Now, here, as example, pie chart. I take it from my references, from my resource, my resources, my research, and with the system. Okay, I tell them that this is what we did. So I talk about my research. I try to include it, no matter the, the method, the, 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 sorry, the topic you are covering in your course, in your lecture notes, you will find a way to link your research to what you are giving. These are tables. Okay, also from my research. This is a pie chart from my <coughs> research. Sometimes I, I make links for referencing, uh, but you see in each slide, I, I, you, you can see the references. As example, this is reference number six. Okay, and this is from my, my research, as you can see, a course coordinator research. Okay, <coughs> this is from my research. Polygram with uh, the diagram, polybar, diagram. You see here, line graph plus bar. OK, I use it in my research. Why don't you, I don't use it here in my discussion? OK, more examples, more tables and with citation. This is useful. So this is math, but I try to link my research with because wherever you go, math is there. Any course you give, there is math. You have research. You are doing math in your research. So why don't you link what you are giving here? I think I will stop here with this. Unfortunately, I cannot take uh, uh, let me say questions here because I mean it is um, not for audience, but uh, I hope you learn something from this uh, brief. Thank you very much.